when I was invited to be sure to come down, I kind of listened to what words come into my head. And the first was repentance. It was the three R's. I thought this is the three R's, but it's not reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's repentance, responsibility, and relationships. And when I was seeking a way of repentance for my participation as a Marine Corps officer, as a person who was completely intellectual and given to entirely materialistic thinking, who actually had, was an owner of General Electric stock, when I was seeking a way of repentance, I had been so inspired by Catonsville and you know one step leads to another and I went to see Dan and Dan said to me there's plenty of sackcloth and ashes in prison everyone here pretty much knows the taste of ashes and the bitter uncomfortable feeling of sackcloth tens of thousands of people all across this country over the last 30 years have put on sackcloth and ashes. They've known the bitterness of the handcuffs and the chains and the humiliation and think, dear God, what this country is if it can put Sister Ann Montgomery under a hood and throw her to the ground. What a shame and a disgrace it is to this land that they can put Father Philip Berrigan in prison for 11 years or Father Carl Cabot for 18 years. What a shame and a disgrace it is on the land for simple acts of sanity, of health, of calling the country to repentance. When we were to be resentenced ten years ago, I think we came up to this hilltop and we unfurled a big banner because we were about to be sentenced for some lengthy numbers of, of so-called crimes, I guess. And we unfurled this banner and it just said, the crime is here. The law was entirely on our side and the majority of justices in this state knew the law was on our side. And wouldn't it be absurd to think that the law was on the side of genocide, that the law was on the side of the extinction of all life on earth? Wouldn't that be grotesque? And yet the Supreme Court came forth in this state and said, yes, the law is on the side of this. And that's a condemnation and a shame and a disgrace for this land. Well, the second word was responsibility, and you remember Daniel Berrigan's, what should we call it, soliloquy, song, prayer, poem, to the judge that day, in summation of the Plowshares 8 trial. The crime, he said, the crime is our responsibility, is our taking responsibility, the name of our offense was responsibility. And the last word, the last R, was relationships. Friendships, relationships, community, one conversation, one meeting leading to another. If Brandywine hadn't been kept fit coping, holding the vigil on the sunny days and the cold days, the long hours and in the face of the mocking and the jeering and the dismissal and the disregard and disrespect uh, we would never have known what was going on in that innocuous building number nine relationships friendships I'm deeply grateful I thank you Bob and Beth and Brandywine and Liz and Dan and let me just go around and name every single, every single one and companion on, on this mighty spiritual community of repentance, of friendship, of responsibility. Daniel, people just want, to, want I think so many of us want you to know that Cadenceville reversed 
impossible. It reversed hopelessness. And if some stood up, uh, you put it into words, but first of all, you stood up. The Cadenceville Nine stood up. We all owe you any future we have.